Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Tonight we're taking a look at the Crusader by Hobby King. Okay, before I get too far into the first look, the first thing I want to do is remind you guys, if you'd like to help support the channel, I've got t-shirts. I'll put a link in the description. So if you want to get something from the store, you know, go check out the t-shirts I've got. If you buy anything, every, every dollar I get from that goes into things like this review. So I, I use the money to buy things for the channel. If you want to help support the channel, that's a good way you can do it and you get something out of the deal. The second thing is, if you haven't seen the Judge episode on this Sunny Sky 2814, you need to watch it because I was blown away at the performance of this motor and this airplane is where this motor is going. All right, third thing is, I'm dedicating this video and this plane to my good friend Richard in Arizona. Richard had an ugly stick. I don't know whatever happened to it, but he had an ugly stick that was so grossly overpowered. I did a video on it and mentioned the word NASA needs to investigate because the plane was just literally a rocket ship. So I am grossly overpowering this plane and I don't care. It's not about efficiency, it's not about flight time, it's just about having some fun and maybe doing some vertical takeoffs with, a, uh, with an ugly stick. So that's what I'm after with this one and it's just meant to have a little fun, okay? So before I start looking at the hardware, let's take a look at the numbers real quick. This is a Balsa airplane, not an EPO plane. It's a 47.3 inch wingspan or 1200 millimeters for those of you who use the correct measuring system. It weighs 2.18 pounds or 990 grams. Again, I'm using my Sunny Sky 2814, which is a 35 class motor. And I will be running that motor with a ZTW 60 amp ESC. By the way, these ZTW ESCs, I really like these. They've been reliable in Florida heat. I've never had a problem calibrating them. Their programming card is only six bucks and they're reasonably priced. So these ZTW Beatles ESCs, they're very good. I use them in a lot of my planes. And you can get them either at Black Cat Shopping, who's been a good friend and sponsor to the channel. They're the ones that provided the 80 amp ESC that I use on all of the judge videos. Or you can also get them at Altitude Hobbies if Black Cat doesn't have what you need. As far as servos go, I'll be using these MG90 Metal Gear 9 gram servos. And I get these on Amazon 5 for like 15 bucks. The receiver, I'll use the FR Sky S6R. I love these things because 30 bucks and you get a built-in stabilizer. While I'm not a huge stabilizer guy, I do like wind rejection mode. So I think that's a really nice feature to have. And for 30 bucks, what the heck, you can't go wrong. All right, let's get into the airplane. The first thing I'll point out is on the fuselage. Everything looks good in terms of covering. I had no problems at all with the covering. Everything looked clean. Those are my fingerprints down the side. The only real beef that I kind of picked out is that I could see on the side here, you see the, the little divots there? That could have been filled with body filler and maybe sanded a little better. That's about it though. That's about the extent of the beefs on, on the fuselage. One other thing that I noticed that I'm just not sure about is this, if you look at this tail, look at the gap on this side, it's smaller there than it is over here. So that's off a little bit. Um, that is the vertical stabilizer too. So I'm not sure, I may have to do some trimming on that to get that square. I don't know, I'll look at it, I'm not sure. All right, as far as the push rods go, they're already installed. They've got push rod guide tubes and when I first looked at it, I do see a little bit of movement in the middle. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm gonna hook the servos up and run it and see what I see. And if push comes to shove, I'll figure out a way to kind of give a little support to these two so they don't, they don't move that much. That's a lot, but we'll see. And then you also have to cut out the ventilation on the bottom. You see these blue vertical stripes here. That has to come out so you can let the airplane breathe. So no big deal. I mean, that's not, that's not a fault or anything. It's just, just pointing it out and something that needs to be cared for during assembly. But other than that, the, the fuselage looks nice and square. I've looked down the, down the side. I don't see any problems with the decking or the base. The sides look square, flush. I, I mean, there's just really, there's nothing, I don't see anything here that, that is concerning in terms of build quality. Everything looks like it's put together very well. N no issues at all. I think this is the battery hatch. Yeah, a couple magnets holding that on, and that's where your battery goes. Right up front there. And you guys remember the uproar? This is funny, because look at the deck, see? 
I complained on the uproar that there was too much flex. Look at this one. It doesn't freaking move. That's what I'm talking about. That's what the, that's what this stuff should be. And the reason it doesn't move is because they left it, they left an edge right there. So there's nowhere for the wood to go. This is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about in terms of fit and finish that makes me crazy. You know, when you build these planes, by the way, that uproar, it's even though I put a piece of ply on the bottom, it still vibrates. I hear it when it flies. I hear brrr, you hear it. So anyway, nice job on their part to make that that cover nice and flush and not move. So I like that. It looks good. This is a good looking fuselage. I'm happy with that. Everything looks good there. All right, as far as the wings go, I'm going to show you the ailerons. And by the way, I'm going to give you a quick little tip on these ailerons. So after I did the upper video and I told you I was looking down the edge and I saw a little bit of wash in, uh, it was uh, Gypsy Salami goes, man, that's wash in. <laughs> that's what that is. So Dave called me and he goes, hey, you know how to fix that, don't you? And I said, actually, I don't. I know it's a problem, but I don't know how to fix it. He said, all you got to do is take the surface, put it down flat, push, make sure the surface, make sure the control surface is flat and wherever you see a wrinkle, iron it and then flip it over and do it again. Sure enough, I did that on the uproar and man, that sucker is straight as an arrow. So I'll look at these. They have to be ironed, tidied up a little bit. But if I see any issues uh, looking down the, the straight edge, that's a great tip from Dave. All you have to do, let me see if I can get this lined up right. All you've got to do is look down the edge and wherever you see an issue, straighten it and then iron it where you see the wrinkle and that'll take that, that torque right out of it. And it does work. I did it on the uproar and it worked perfectly. So ailerons are fine. Notice the control horn slot is already cut. So that makes it easy to install. No problems. The other aileron, I don't know which side is which. I'll figure it out when I build it, but everything looks good on this guy too. The covering does line up well with the trim scheme on the plane, so I didn't see any problems there. And this is a framed aileron. This is not solid. This is not solid triangle stock. It is framed, oddly enough. And it's got the nice little scallop along the back edge. And they actually did a pretty nice job covering that. That's, that's not easy to do, but they did a nice job covering that. No wrinkles or anything along that scalloped edge. So it looks good. I like it. All right, vertical stabilizer. This is a framed, not sheeted piece. I did check the hinges are cut, so they just have to be installed and glued. These are CA hinges, and they remove the CA along, or the CA. They remove the covering along the bottom, so you don't have to do that when you glue it together. It's all done for you. Anyway, no issues with the rudder. Very simple design, nice and flat, looks very straight. No complaints there at all. Horizontal stabilizer, same deal. This is a framed piece. It is not sheeted, so nice and light back there. Scalloped trailing edge on this one and the covering again, nice job. Better than I would do, I can tell you that. The only thing that I saw that was an issue on this is it looks like the elevator is just a little bit wider than the horizontal stabilizer to me, just a little bit. So other than that, everything there looks good. No issues. Nice job on the covering. Couple little, you know, I'll hit it with an iron just there, but nothing, nothing to worry about there. Very easy and clean. And then finally, let's take a look at the wing. The one thing I'll tell you about the wing is that Dave told me on his plane and I looked at it, he saw anhedral on his plane. I looked at my wing. Sorry, Dave, I don't see it on this one, man. That looks straight as an arrow but no anhedral. So anhedral is the opposite of dihedral, meaning it's more like a uh, umbrella. You know, it's rounded at the top instead of at the bottom. So Dave's, ex Dave's Crusader, just like this one, he's got a little anhedral. On this one, I don't see it. It looks very, very straight. So good there. And then as far as the build quality goes, at least on the outside, it looks excellent. I mean, the, the covering is really good. It looks to be spaced perfectly and you know, I'm just kind of looking at the vertical line distances from you know the stripe color changes to the ribs and they look like they're very even to me everything looks right uh, again maybe a little touch-up work on some of these corners to get those wrinkles out but that's no you know no big deal and here's the bottom of the wing everything looks good there you can see that the servo cutouts are there for the standard nine gram servos and they leave strings in there to pull your leads through this is a four channel airplane, by the way. So ailerons, elevator, throttle, and rudder. There we go, wing looks excellent. No concerns with the wing, looks very good. Okay, let's take a look at the hardware. Landing gear, 
This is a tail dragger. Dave converted his for a nose wheel. I think I'm just going to leave mine tail dragger. I'm just not going to mess with it. I don't mind tail draggers, and uh, they're easier in the grass anyway. Landing gear looks stout. It's just the traditional aluminum you know, frame piece that you see on so many different airplanes. No wheel pants, nothing fancy about this plane. That's what makes it a good pickup truck. It's just a chuck and go plane. The hardware kit is very simple. There's this little, I don't even know what that's for. It's pr it looks to me like something to do with the tail wheel. I'm not sure yet. I'll figure it out. And then there's a couple wood shims in there, the tail wheel assembly, some nylon screws for the wing, a couple of quick connects for the servos. That's about it. A couple washers. Very simple hardware kit. There's really not much to it. All right, I've never seen control horns like this, but they come on a on a piece of, it's plastic sheet, and they were obviously, I don't know what obviously, I don't know how they were cut. They may, laser cut maybe? I don't know. There's no burn marks. That's why I'm stumbling about that. I don't see any burn marks in there, so I don't know how they did that. But here's what they look like pulled out. Just a simple little plastic thing. They feel pretty rigid. I mean, I don't, I don't see any problem with that. We'll see. But these are the gluein type. You guys know if you watch my videos for any length of time, I really prefer the ones that screw in and have a plate on the top. But I have flown plenty of these on flight test type planes. So we'll see. The one thing I'll say about building with these, make sure you scuff them up and glue them in good because you get no help on the top. And then they give you a sheet of CA hinges, green ones instead of white ones, but hey, they're CA hinges. All right, if you like this kind of content, I would definitely appreciate it if you interact with a video in some way. Do a thumbs up. I, I, get, I get thousands of views on some of my videos and only thumbs up or thumbs down or comments in the tens or twenties. So any interaction I get on a video is helpful. So I appreciate it if you guys give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, leave a comment, subscribe. That's really important. If you're not a member of the channel already, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and that way you know when new material hits the channel and you can be part of the group as we move forward through this journey together that I'm going through with RC flying. Uh, so if you're a regular member on the channel, I appreciate you. You know that. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your engagement. Keep that up. Uh, share the video every now and then. Don't forget about the store. Go grab yourself a t-shirt. That's all I've got for tonight. Have a great night. Take it easy.